Hi everyone. Welcome to video number five in the IC7100 from A to Z series. In video number four, I mentioned that we were doing some of our social isolating in our fifth wheel camper. This time I thought we'd take a look at the portable setup I used and how well the 7100 can work in a temporary setup with compromise antennas. Let's have a look. This is the setup I had in the back of our camper. I'm using a folding table as my primary desk. I've got a monitor, desk lamp, and a microphone as well since I'm using this as my video studio in addition to a ham shack. I have the base radio unit, my MFJ tuner, and the power supply just sitting on the corner of the table. One of the nice things about the 7100 is that I could have just as easily stacked those items on the floor or someplace else out of the way since I only need the radio head to be on the table and accessible. Outside, I'm using two 8-foot stainless steel whips screwed into an MFJ portable dipole mount. This mount is mainly intended to work with hamstick style antennas. You would normally use two identical hamsticks for whatever band you wanted to work. Uh, and I do have some ham sticks that I've used that way with this mount, but I found that two untuned whips and an antenna tuner can make a very convenient multiband antenna. One key to this being effective is to keep the coax run as short as possible. It is a compromise, but I've had plenty of fun with this setup. The antenna is mounted on a 20-foot telescoping aluminum mast that I picked up at a ham fest quite a few years ago. I have the mast mounted to a flagpole mount on the camper's roof ladder. That's about it for the setup. Let's take a look at how well it works. I didn't work any around the world DX, but one evening on 20 meters, I was able to carry on a conversation with a station back in Kansas, about a thousand miles away, and we talked for probably 45 minutes to an hour and the signal and audio quality was as good as if he was sitting across the room from me. Let's listen in a little bit. Blue Valley or Spring Hill or Olathe, that sort of thing. Anyway, I'll shoot it back to you. Uh, WA2IBD, WA0HHX. Yeah, WA0HHX, WA2IVD. Very good, Rod. And, um... Well, um, I guess Phoenix must have actually been cooler than where we are today because it was about 105 here today, so it was pretty blistering. Um, and I'm out in the middle of you know open farmland, so we're we're really enjoying the area. We really we really like it so far. Uh, so back to you, Rod. Uh, WA zero HHX WA two IVD. Roger WA two IVD WA zero HHX 100 uh, percent. Uh, your signal took a significant dip there, but it came back up again, so I'm going to keep this a little short because uh, I think propagation is beginning to change a little bit. However, it didn't miss anything. Well, first of all, yeah, please uh, feel free to use uh, uh, any uh, any audio of uh, this, this uh, QSO you want to use. So I guess that makes uh, perfect sense. All right. Well, I'm going to kick it back to you, Tom, and let you tie the ribbons on it because I think the band's going to shift out on us here, and there's no point in uh, talking to dead air. So it's a great pleasure to meet you, and I look forward to meeting you in person uh, when you're up in the area here. I say we're here most all the time. All my information is good on QRZ.com, by the way. Uh, WA2IVD, WA0HHX. Yeah, WA0HHX, WA2IVD. Really good timing, Rod, because you were taking some significant fades uh, during your transmission there, and you came up pretty good at the end. Uh, full copy the whole time. Your 600 watts is doing great. But I was afraid that if you turned it over to me in some of the dips, you might not hear me at all or very poorly. So hopefully you're copying me okay on this one. And, uh, yeah, we'll... We'll call it quits here because I think we are going to lose the band, but uh, very nice to meet you. I might, uh, might probe you for a little more local information when we get back that way. WA0HHX, uh, great to talk to you and uh, very, very best 73. WA2IVD will be uh, clear. Okay, Tom, yeah, 100% copy, but uh, signal's way up and down, way up and down, so good time to end it. And, uh, yeah, safe travels on your way back to KC. The uh, weather should be good. It's supposed to be really nice uh, in the uh, mid-70s, maybe even hit 80 degrees here over the next three or four days. Uh, so uh, you should be driving back in some perfect weather conditions. So safe travels to you and your family, and...
and uh, we'll look forward to meeting you at some point. And uh, I'd say feel free to connect up with me anytime. All my information is uh, good on QRZ.com. Uh, so, 73 from uh, uh, the great state of Kansas to you out there in uh, Arizona, and uh, we'll see you soon. Uh, WA2, uh, IVD, WA0HHX. Take care. 73. Well, we didn't cover anything specific about the radio this time, but we did have some fun with it. There's no question that large resonant antennas, towers, and beams are all ideal if you can manage and afford those things. But I wanted you to see that you can still have a lot of fun, even with a very modest and non-ideal setup. If you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate a click on the like button. If you find the channel useful, please consider clicking on the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified about new episodes, just click on that bell icon once you have subscribed. I'm always happy to see any suggestions, questions, corrections, or other thoughts that you have in the comment section. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.